Hi, I'd like to welcome you to your virtual visit to Villanova's Chemical and Biological Engineering Department. And I'd like to also offer you a little bit of a, a peek into one of your senior courses called Process Design. My name is Dorothy Scaff, and I'm one of the instructors with Scott Jackson. The Chemical Process Design class is a capstone course that talks about Inter or that focuses on integrating all of the information and knowledge that you've gained in earlier classes and putting it all together to design a process to make a desired chemical. And the students in this course work on teams to optimize a very basic preliminary design and they keep driving it to be more efficient and more cost effective. The designs are also so big and so complicated that it's beyond what they can do with uh, either Excel or hand calculations. And we use a specialized software tool called Aspen to simulate the pieces of equipment and to connect them all together into a big process. The designs are usually based around several technical requirements for the product and also some constraints on the process. So there could be technical constraints such as the maximum operating temperature, uh, beyond which a chemical might be degraded or reactive, right? That has to be incorporated as one of the features of the design to build a realistic process. The uh, student groups are challenged to innovate and come up with new design ideas that they can simulate and evaluate. And part of the evaluation includes uh, the cost of the equipment and the cost of the materials that they're using and the energy that's being consumed in the process. And they evaluate and line up some of their different design ideas and run it through these cost filters and then pick what they think is the best design. And on top of this, we also add some filters for the energy consumption and the environmental impact of the process. And then finally, as a, uh, a overall retrospective on the process, we discuss issues such as the public welfare, cultural and global impacts and process safety issues associated with the process. And these are all the different things that go into considering a process design. And what you see on the graphics here on the slide is uh, are several pieces of equipment. In the top left corner, I just have a pump because many times the streams that we're connecting or passing from one piece of equipment to another have to be either pressurized or heated. In the middle of the bottom, I have a cutaway picture of a heat exchanger. On the left, I have an example of a, uh, one example of a type of reactor where you could have catalysts packed in the tubes and your reacting chemicals would flow through the tubes. And then surrounding the tubes is an area where we would flow a heat transfer fluid that could either be cooling or heating the reaction. <clears throat> and then finally in the bottom right, I have a picture of a distillation column. Distillation columns are the workhorses for doing our separation. So what are some what are some recent projects? Well, just last fall, we did a project trying to come up with a process for high purity lactic acid. The motivation for the process is the recent growth in the market for high purity lactic acid feedstock to be used to make polylactic acid plastics, which are more recyclable than most traditional plastics. All right, so there's sort of a sustainability goal in this both on two accounts. One is the more recyclable polylactic acid plastic, as well as the fact that the lactic acid itself can be made from non-petroleum resources. It can be made from a fermentation process based on sugar. So we wanted to look into these possibilities and the students were uh, asked to make some initial designs looking at some published traditional processes that are based primarily on distillation. And then they were challenged to come up with some alternative processes and students found some information in the literature on extraction processes, which is another separation method. And that offered a lot of economic advantages. And here's a process that actually looks quite simple based on the central extraction unit here. Uh, compared to the complication for the other processes that had been based on distillation. So I was very proud of the students. Many students came up with very cost-effective processes uh, based on the, these, this extraction model. 
Another recent design is one to make methyl methacrylate, which is uh, another chemical which is used for producing plastics. These are very hard, high strength plastics, but they're also components in paint. So we were looking at, in this case, some of the different options for the chemical pathways to make the desired product. So we, we evaluated five different chemical routes to make the product, all starting with a different original feed material. Right? So we had things like um, linear butanol, uh, a nonlinear, a branched butanol molecule. We started with a C3 compound. So we had five different chemical pathways that we looked at. And this process, was very interesting because it's completely different logic than the polylactic acid, than the lactic acid purification process. That process was really made complicated by the separations required because it was a very uh, difficult system uh, to handle uh, with the separations. This methyl methacrylate reaction process was very difficult because the reactions were so fast and so energetic we actually had to work hard to come up with a, uh, a safe way to control these reactions, right? And then here is an example of a portion of the process that one student group came up with, with a main reaction step here, followed by uh, multiple separation steps. So I hope that this gives you a little bit of an idea about what chemical process design is. Uh, it is not the most common path, career pathway for our students, but it is something that it's important for chemical engineers to know about. And we like to give you a realistic experience based on uh, current processes and current problems. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your virtual visit and good luck with your college choice decisions. Bye.